the day we're 3D printing and assembling Sweden's turretless tank. So this thing is quite a famous tank because it was made without a turret and it actually aims using its tracks. So the left and right tracks could move in a way that could actually aim the barrel. So this thing was mental. It also had on the front of it an actual digger appliance so it could dig its own ditches to hide in. So you can imagine if this was ever actually used in war, it would have just had the barrel sticking out and would have been a very hard target to hit. But anyway, let's get on with assembly. So to begin with, we've got three main parts that hold together the main body. And this is a free 3D model. If you want to go ahead and make this yourself, there's a link in the description to the original designer stuff. But I do run into a couple of big issues with this. So watch the video to not make the mistakes I made. So overall, the main body goes together beautifully. I do hate having a seam right down the middle, but there's not really a way to kind of get around that. And I agree with the original designer here how they split it up. Then on top, we've got a few additional kind of uh, details to add. So we've got like a hatch and we've got kind of a vent cover. So both of that gets placed on. I've also printed this off in an olive green filament. So I don't actually have to spray paint it either, which is quite nice. But this filament's not so great when it comes to printing support. So there was quite a few support areas on this and they didn't quite print out beautifully. But... It does mean I don't have to bother spray painting it, so I'm quite happy with that. And now that it's all glued up, we can move on to the more complex parts. And the next part here is actually going to be the wheels. And I really like this. I recently did another tank on the channel around about the same scale as this. And there was no kind of alignment for the wheels. You just had to glue it on and do your best to get it as straight as possible. This is awesome. They've got pegs to go on. They've got slots to go into. They're really nice and assembling the wheels here was absolutely a joy so very very happy with this this was absolutely great there's also fully articulated tracks as well to go on this and the last one uh, the tracks were printed off individually had to attach them to each one this one they actually print off in one uh, strip but because of the size of it you need two but we'll get to that in a second. Up next, we've got the bits on the bottom here. So make sure that when you're placing the bottom part on the bottom of the body here, that you do have the ledges that these are actually going to sit on. And they go on really well and glue up beautifully. And you can, of course, see where our wheels are going to end up attaching. And it's quite an interesting system because they are pegs that the wheels will just go straight onto. But as soon as you rotate them, it's harder to get them off. So it's quite a good uh, system. Now, here's our tracks. So these print off in strips and then you just have to attach a few pieces together. Now, this is where I had a major issue. These were too big. And I was like, wait, what? So I ended up having to actually remove seven links in total. So originally I also removed eight, which was a bit too much. But you can see here, this is the full size as they print off from the original files. And they look cool, but you'll see when we actually try to put them on, they're just far too big. So here's our wheels and we can just slot on all our different wheels and if we rotate them, they nicely lock into place and they still will rotate and they'll come off if you want to. But because the tracks will then go on top of them, it's impossible for any one to actually come off by itself. So yeah, really cool system. So here I go with the first test fit and I'm like, wait a minute, that's far too big, way too big. So I ended up taking out eight links at this point, but that was too many. It fit on, but it was a little bit too tight, as you'll see later. And I checked with both, both were too big. So I was like, all right, gotta take some links off. So I ended up taking eight off for this, but that was a touch too much. It did go together on this side. But if you watch that back wheel, you'll notice it's definitely kind of flexing a little bit. And that's a problem because I go to put the other one on the other side with the same amount of links removed and snap the back wheel. So that was, of course, a problem. I ended up solving that by, of course, gluing it back on and then adding one extra link. So I took seven off total. So if you watch here, you'll see the back wheel as we rotate this will snap off. So yeah, pain in the ass. Thankfully, very easy glue back on and we're back on our way. And at this point, of course, I had that extra link back on. So now I've only taken seven off in total and that ended up being perfect. It looks a little bit loose, but... It seems to be pretty much perfect. And you, and you can see it will rotate if you want to. But of course, in this model, you don't need that to happen. And now we're past the most complicated part. And we can start adding on all the accessories and we're almost done. So we've got the plow. We've got some stuff for the back. We've got the barrel. We've got some uh, spare links, which are actually different from the other links we printed. And we're going to go ahead and glue this all on. So at first is our plow, which we use to dig holes for this thing to hide in if this was uh, ever to be launched in a war. And of course it was made for defensive war only. 
Then we've got our barrel. This is two parts, glue them up, and that gets added onto the front. We've also got the kind of storage bins at the back here, and they're gonna get glued on like that. So very, very simple and looking cool. I expect those storage bins are the things that are gonna get broken off if anything's gonna get damaged on this thing, or maybe the barrel as well. And we've also got some spare tracks on the front which look really good by themselves and add just a little bit more kind of uh, detail and contrast to the model. Like I say, not, not the same design as the other tracks, which is interesting to have gone for. And then we add our barrel on. He is almost perfect. Now you might think we're actually done, but we have one more piece and this was the most annoying part to print. So we actually have some side panels to go on here. These in their original design, only the first uh, bit of the front, the triangles would have actually built, uh, printed on the bed. Everything else had to be built on supports. So I had a lot of problems with this filament and supports. So I had to sink the whole thing in so that most of it would then actually be printed flat with the rest of it with supports. But of course that meant it's now closer to the wheels than it should be. And I was amazed that it actually still fitted. I was really expecting this was not gonna work, but thankfully it did. And they kind of do uh, scuff the side of the wheels, but because the wheels don't actually move in this model, it's not an issue. Then we can go ahead and take off the bands and we are done. And this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Very happy to have printed this and the original files are incredible. Only a few things had to be tweaked. You can delete seven of the links and you can also do something with those side panels to make them easier to print. If it's like what I've done where I've sunk them into the bed to make it easier, you can do that. But you might be able to get away with figuring out a better solution. But overall, this thing looks sensational. Very happy to have printed it. And yeah, 10 out of 10 model, really, really nice.